<laughs> All right, guys, so I just probably had the most stressful 24 hours of my life. Uh, if you guys missed it, my channel was hacked and it was my fault. I clicked on something I shouldn't have, low my lesson, I won't do it in the future. And luckily YouTube was able to help me out. They got my channel back in 24 hours, we're back up and running, all the videos are back. Got rid of all the other nonsense. Hopefully you guys didn't click on any of those, you know, scammy crypto uh, things that are being streamed on my channel last night. But moving on from that, yesterday a bunch of trades went down. It was like the trade deadline came early. I wanna look at the kind of biggest hockey trade that happened, which was Bowen Byram getting traded to the Buffalo Sabres in exchange for Casey Middlestad. The Avalanche were very busy. They actually made another trade, which I'll probably uh, cover in this video as well. Buffalo obviously not making the playoffs. Casey Middlestad, solid player, you know, second line center, having a career year. Two and a half million for one more year. Maybe, you know, they're not really close on price or Buffalo just wanted to add to their defense. You guys can see in game there, Casey Middlestad's age rating potential. Again, having a career year, this is probably the time to trade them. And they get back, I think, a really good return in Bowen Byram. Byram has been having the best season, but he's a young defenseman, uh, former, what, fourth overall pick. I think you look at that Avs team too. He's playing behind McCarr, Taze, Gerard, Manson, like, you know, tons of guys there, not really getting as much ice time, I think. In Buffalo, he is still behind Darlene and Power. If you look at left-hand defensemen, they're kind of stacked, but I'm sure one of these guys will be on the right side. You guys can see there, uh, Byram Elite Potential making 3.85 million for the next two years. So um, cost controlled pretty well for Buffalo Sabres. I don't see Avalanche saying yes to this, basically because Byram has Elite Potential, middle says medium top six. In real life, I think, you know, this is much more fair of a trade. You guys can let me know if I should like downgrade Byron's potential from elite to medium top four in my next roster, but uh, we'll see what the Avs say. And yeah, no surprise there, trade is rejected. Also too, guys, I don't know why I just thought of this, but in regards to my channel getting hacked, I actually saw I lost 200 subscribers. So if you guys are watching this and you don't mind, you know, telling a friend about the channel or something like that, I really appreciate it. Also, leave a like on this video. Try and, you know, get it out there so people can see I got the channel back. It would mean a lot to me. And now after that trade, guys, see what the Sabres lines could look like when healthy. So, again, even without middle stat, the top six is still quite solid. You got Benson coming up. Krebs going to get better. Olsen's probably gone after this season. Fourth line, that's not bad. Defensively, you could have Power and Deline on the top pair. Again, luckily for them, Deline does play the right side a good amount. Because like I was saying, your three best defensemen right now are all left-handed. I got Byron on the second pair with Yuki Harju. Clifton, Samuelson, bottom pair. So the defense looking much better. Goal tightening, you got Levi, you got Lekkinen. One of those guys is going to step up right now. This season, obviously, it's been Lekkinen, but I think Levi definitely the goalie of the future. Now, before we move on, guys, to the Avalanche, I'll show you what Bowen Byram looks like as a Buffalo Sabre in game. Again, I think, honestly, a pretty fair trade here. I feel like Middlestaff's a better player right now, but Bowen Byram definitely has that higher ceiling. As you guys can see right there, as I look at him, Wearing number four, newest member of the Buffalo Sabres. Like if, luckily for him too, he's already won a Stanley Cup. So, so if the Buffalo Rebuild takes another five years, he shouldn't be too worried. So like I was saying guys, but I'm gonna try to trade from Colorado's perspective. I feel like for sure Buffalo's saying yes. As always too, the trade difficulty is set to medium. See what the Sabres say. They're also interested in Byram. So yeah, easy accept there. Now, like I said, abs were not done. They made one of their trade yesterday, getting Sean Walker in a fifth round pick from the Flyers in exchange for Ryan Johansson in a first. So they basically paid a first for the Johansson cap dump plus Sean Walker, which I think is actually, you know, pretty good GM work by Joe Sackick. So I'll take a look here at Sean Walker in game. I think he's like 82 or something. Yeah, 20 years old, they're 82 overall expiring deal. 2.6 million, he's a solid defensive defenseman. Playing your second player, playing your bottom pair, playing on the PK. They also get back a fifth round pick. It's always funny to me, you know, how they decide, you know, it's going to be a fifth round pick in 2026. That's what's going to sweeten it over. Kind of honestly like a real, uh, honestly very similar to like a franchise trade. Now, they give Johansson who in game isn't too bad. 82 overall there, making 4 million for the next two years. Obviously a couple years ago, he played really well for the Predators, 63 points. Last year, they only had 28. This year, hasn't really been doing much for the Avs. And then with him is a 2025 first round pick. So looking at it here, the value is way on the Avs side. I think the Flyers for sure say yes to this one as well. Trade is accepted. So kind of funny in game. I think, you know, EA is thinking the Avs got fleeced on both of these. But honestly, I feel like Walker is the better defensive defenseman than Byram. Obviously, Byram probably a more offensive game, has better potential. But right now, Walker's better defensively, which I think they need. And then also too, right now, middle stat for sure, better than Johansson. So they actually upgraded at center, upgraded at D. Paid a first round pick. They cleared up some calf space to make, you know, the couple of trades made the day. So I, like I said, I think Saki did pretty good work. Also guys, if you're curious, third round pick here for Brandon Duane. Looks like the third's got more value. Wild say yes. And then hands on the third round pick for Trenton Sword also looks like it's gonna go through because the third round pick has more value than all these like depth guys. 
And yeah, the Predators say yes. So again, I think in game EA thinks the Avs lost all four of these deals. And so after those trades, guys, here's what the Avs lines like look like. I've got Durant on the first line, McKinnon, Rantanen. I got Nichushkin on the second line. Apparently, he might be back this Friday. So actually, that's tomorrow. Uh, playing with middle stat there and Lekkinen. You got Wood, Colton, Parise on the third line with O'Connor, Trennan, and Duane on the fourth. In terms of the defense, even with Obayer on the top four there, Taze, McCarr, Manson, and Girard is still very solid. I got Jack Johnson, Walker on the bottom pair. Instead of Johnson, you could also have Caleb Jones. On top of that, too, I got Cogliano scratch. And of course, Landis Kulak potentially could be back in time for the playoffs. So this Avs team is going to be stacked. Yorgiev there is a starter. Prospetov backing him up. Yorgiev has played well. So, I mean, this Avs team, like I said, they're going to be dangerous. I'll give you guys your first look here at Casey Middlestat. As a card of Avalanche, I think, you know, he should do really well there on that second line spot, especially with Nchushkin coming back. He does get to play with him. And then whether it be Lekin and Duran on the other wing, Gonna be a solid line for sure, especially when McKinnon gets all those tough matchups. So there you guys have it. Casey Middlestat, right number 37, as a newest member of the Avalanche. And now next you guys will try the trade from the Flyers' perspective. Again, you can see the value is way on the Av side. I think your hands for Walker, one for one in game is pretty fair. So the fact the Avalanche are also getting up a first round pick here. No way they say yes. Yeah, trade dejected. So like I was saying, EA thinks the Avs lost both those trades along with even the two smaller trades they made. I'm just kind of curious. Walker for Johansson, one for one. Rejected at medium difficulty. It looks like pretty close though. And so here's what the Flyers team might look like after that trade. You might notice Johansson not in the forward group. That's because the Flyers actually immediately put him on waivers. Defensively though, of course, no Walker. I mean, Drysdale's hurt right now. So like they're relying more on Sealer who just got a big contract. Stahl versus the line in. Obviously Sanheim there, they're number one. Looking at this team, I still can't believe like they're in a playoff spot. Just uh, such a good job coaching, I think, by Tortorella. As I mentioned, Johansson on waivers. No one's picking him up. So uh, Lehigh Valley fan who just got a new 1C. I'll show you guys what uh, Johansson looks like on that team. And so there you go, guys. Ryan Johansson, newest member of the Lehigh Valley Phantoms. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave that thumbs up. Again, guys, it really helped me out with, you know, everything that went on yesterday. If you're watching this, you haven't subscribed, or maybe you accidentally unsubscribed thinking my channel is something else, hit that sub button. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.